Good morning folks, we're going to continue our adventure into perimeter and area today with trapeziums. Remember, we're still, as with all shapes that you're trying to find area of, we're going to turn a trapezium into a, um, into a rectangle, because then it's easy, then it's just length times width, that's the big thing with area to remember. But before that, we've got our little starter from last lesson to have a look at. Now I said before that um, you could do it by trial and error, you could do it by other ways as well. 113, well if I've got three numbers, I the thing I thought to myself was if I had three 40s that would make 120. So I'm looking for some of the larger numbers that we've got here. Um, so that helps you sort of knock out a load of ones that you couldn't do. The other thing is 113 is an odd number and we've got quite a lot of of even numbers down here so i actually got this totally right first time um by the fact that i looked at that and i thought well if i've got two odd two even numbers and one odd that'll give me an odd number because when you add even numbers you stay even if you've got even and then you add an odd to it like zero plus one it goes odd so I picked out, I saw the 40 there because I thought, oh yeah, I want to have quite a few. And then I, I thought, oh, let's have an, an even number that's a little bit less because I don't want quite as much as 120. And then I thought, well, I'm going to need an odd number. This 35 is a little bit less again. Let's try that out. And that's 2 less than 40. That's 5 less than 40. 2 plus 5 is 7. 113 is 7 less than 120. And if you do 8 plus 5, that's 13. 7, 10, 113. So sometimes it's not just about blindly trying everything, although you can always do that if you have no other idea, but it's about thinking about what you've got there in the first place. Right, so we're looking at finding the area and perimeter, as I said, of a trapezium today. So a trapezium is a four-sided shape with just one pair of parallel lines so it might be if i'm going to go along four squares here and then i'm going to come down four so if you've got squares you could do the same thing i'm going to go across two then i'm going to have that would be four so if i joined that up that would make a parallelogram but i'm going to keep on going i'm going to go to eight nine ten I think and then join those up there and there so there's my parallel sides now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making this as if it's a rectangle and in order to do that I'm going to go halfway between this point and this point here i'm going to draw in and do this thing of having a, a red rectangle that it's sitting on and then i'm also going to go halfway between that point and that point there sort of laterally across that would be sort of there if i go up there as well and then i'm going to shade in that triangle red and that triangle red and then if I get another color maybe a light blue I'm going to shade in that light blue and I'm going to shade in this triangle here light blue and I'm hoping that you can see that the blue triangles are the same size as the red triangles and therefore this trapezium has got the same area as the red rectangle that it sat on top of so if you were to shade all of this in red here for that rectangle have the same area as the trapezium so the red what dist what length is so the area of the rectangle is going to be length times width isn't it and the width 
that distance there is 4, if we call that 4 meters, and the length across there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Is that right? Is it 7? Yes, it is. 7 meters. So that would be 7 times 4, which is 28 square meters. So that's going to be the same. Now, I'm going to introduce you to the formula for the area of a trapezium and then show you where it comes from because I think if you can see where it comes from you'll find it easier to remember because it is a little bit tricky. The formula goes a half of A plus B in brackets times H and just here I'm going to do another little sketch of a trapezium and then I'm going to put those three letters on so the A is the top side the B is the other parallel sides we could actually call this one B and this one A it makes no difference and the H is like we had with the parallelograms and with the triangles it's the perpendicular height so What's this saying? This is saying a half times the sum of the parallel sides multiplied by the perpendicular height. So just put that in a bit of a bubble that is what the formula is saying now why is it half of these two sides added together that's the bit I wanted to look at here this length here is longer than the length of the rectangle this length here is shorter if you add the two sides together and then halve what you've got you get the length that's halfway between the shorter side and the longer side which is the length of the rectangle that you want and that is another this is another way of saying that this is saying a half of because of means times or times means of um a half of those two sides added together and then it gives you the side the length in the middle and then you just multiply that by the perpendicular height and the perpendicular height we could think of as the width of the rectangle so that makes the length of the rectangle and that makes the width let's just write that let's write that down again so I've got a half a plus B times H so if I say equivalent rectangle so that just means the rectangle that would have the same area So there's the area of a trapezium. Um, and then we can say that is your length times that is your width. Right, now we're going to practice one of those and then I'll give you a few to practice and then that'll be that. So my new trapezium we will have one two three four five six along at the top and then let's go down three and across a couple of that and then go one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and this is actually what's called an isosceles trapezium where the two sloping sides are the same length and it's a bit like if I was to continue those sides up you'd get an isosceles triangle so there's our Things there. So if we call this six centimeters, this ten centimeters, and this here is three centimeters, and I might even put in here 
that those sloping sides are both four centimeters because you might get that then if we do the area and the perimeter so for the area remember the formula is a half of a plus b so a half a plus b are the parallel sides so that's the six and the ten and then that's being multiplied by three now if you've got a calculator you can do this in a calculator but we're going to do them with quite simple numbers today so you can do it without as well so we're going to have a half of 10 plus 6 is 16 times 3 and a half of 16 is 8 times 3 is 24 centimeters squared right so that's the area and then the perimeter is not area is it but it's the length around the outside so it's going to be 10 plus 4 plus 6 plus 4 which is also 24 centimeters is it always the same no as with before if the numbers are very small the perimeter is going to be longer when the numbers get uh, reasonably large it can be the same when they get big then the area should always be more so i'm going to put a couple of these on for you to have a go at now so here's your two questions they've got uh, some of the distances you're going to need for the perimeter some of them you need twice some of them you only need once for the area once for the perimeter so pause the video have a go at both of these and then um, see how we've got on. so Right, for this first one then, the area, if we do the area first, it's going to be a half times the A and the B are these two, because they are parallel to each other, 10 plus 20. And then we're going to times that by 6. So 10 plus 20 is 30, so it's a half of 30 and that times 6. A half of 30 is 15, and 15 times 6, or well, 6 times 10 is 60, plus half of that 30 is 90. So you should have 90 square meters. Remember, a mark for the units being right. Perimeter is the distance around the outside. So we do not need the 6 this time, but we're going to need the 7 and the 8. So it's 7 add 10 add 8 add 20 it doesn't matter which order you do them in 20 add 10 is 30 8 add 7 is 15 30 add 15 is 45 meters exactly half so, on to this last one now this one i am going to say i didn't say you could use a calculator if you've done it without the calculator then that's great but i'd like to just demonstrate what it looks like if you've got one of these calculators if you haven't got one of these yet they're well worth getting you can see the code for them there uh, you can get them um, online for not not too much they're well worth it probably worth a, a grade at your final GCSE exam if you were to get one now and be well practiced with it so what we want is the formula does say a half and then the two parallel sides are these two, 15 add 30, and then we're going to times that by the perpendicular height, which is 10. So that's going to give us the area. Uh, so in the calculator, I press the fraction button there, and then put the one in the top, go down with the cursor to there, then come out of the fraction by hitting that and then I can put a bracket in with that and do 15 plus 30 now in the exam it would be important to write this down as you're working even though you're getting the calculator to do it for you makes it easier to check what you've done as well and then press equals and you can see what your calculation was so you can be doubly sure you've got it right and that's given us 225 millimeters squared and the perimeter 
is just going to be not the 10 but the others. So we're looking at 30 plus 17 plus 12 plus 15. And since I've got the calculator, let's just do that that way. And that gives me 74 millimeters. So you can see with the numbers getting that bit bigger, how much bigger the area is already. Right, well I hope you got on okay with that folks, and I will see you all, or you'll see me again, tomorrow.